On a morning when the world waits to learn more about the wreckage of Malaysian Airlines Flight 370, NASA's on a dramatic mission of its own involving small plane crashes. The space agency wants to improve the tiny transmitters that are on board, designed to alert satellites within seconds of an accident. Chris Van Cleve is at NASA's Langley Research Center that's in Virginia, where they are actually crashing planes to find the answers. Chris, good morning. Good morning. If this had been a real crash, the people inside this plane may not be able to call for help, though they would most likely need it. The technology that NASA is aiming to improve hopes to get that help here faster. Four, three, two. A trip to the moon it's not, three. but NASA believes this small plane's final 100-foot flight will one day save lives. How bad of a crash was that? This was severe. The people on board would definitely need help immediately. Chad Stimson is overseeing this series of three crash tests as researchers look to build a better emergency locator transmitter. Known as an ELT, it's essentially a homing beacon built into many small planes designed to quickly lead rescuers to a crash site. But first, it has to survive the impact. What kind of forces that it's going to be exposed to, um, where it should be installed, um, how to install the other pieces of equipment that it's uh, connected to so that the complete system functions optimally. To do that, researchers will use sensors that gather crash data as well as multiple cameras on the ground and inside the plane to study how well the five ELTs positioned throughout the aircraft hold up. NASA says its landing and impact research facility outside Norfolk, Virginia, is the only place in the world that can do these types of crash tests in such a controlled environment. Originally, it was built to train astronauts to land on the moon, but since 1972, it's been used to crash test spacecraft, helicopters, and planes. Hoping what comes crashing down will keep others flying high, or at least get them help if they need it, says Lisa Mazuka, an astrophysicist who is NASA's search and rescue mission manager. The importance is your life. So if these work and you are in dire straits, we want to make sure that we can get the rescue forces there to you as quickly as possible. Their final crash test is scheduled for August. From there, researchers will crunch the data, and they hope to make a recommendation to the FAA to improve these beacons by the end of the year. Nora? That's really smart that they do that. I am, too. Yeah. I'm, yeah. for one, I'm proud and happy they're doing this. Absolutely. I think it's very smart. But could we just go back to Chris for just a second? Chris, no judgment here, but why are you wearing the hat right now? It's called a helmet. The helmet. Okay, so yes, the helmet. That, that's a fair question, okay. and we we tried to get them to relax the rules, but the giant uh, steel cage up here, there are uh, <laughs> birds that make nests, and they drop very large things, including fish and large sticks. So oh, no. we oh, have okay. to wear it when we're under here. Well, then I'm glad you're wearing the hat, or as it's probably known, the helmet. Thank you, Chris. I that's think you look great, Chris. Very rugged. Very Thank rugged. You. I think it looks and odd. safe. But okay. And safe. All right. We want our correspondents to be safe in the we field. We do. You're right. I yeah. stay and corrected. I'm just Wear curious. More hats. That's right. I was curious. <laughs> Your turn. Thank you. <laughs>